this has been flattened down a little bit. Right there, there's a notch. And I don't know if I can hammer that flat or, but that's, that's what's happened is it's been worn off. You can see it pulls away there and then comes back after. It's very precise. But it's not pushing enough on the exhaust valve. So I'm just going to look up a couple numbers before I attack this thing. <laughs> Thanks. Cool, eh? So this little release... Can you see it? Yes, you can. Right there. It catches on the bottom and it catches on the top, which means it's been flattened out. Right here mostly. What do you do with that? I looked it up. I'm going to keep looking though. Thanks guys. Okay, this is our cam gear. This is way too expensive for me to put into a 20, 20 year old lawnmower, 21 year old lawnmower. So this little cam right there, right there, sticks out about 20 thousandths and I need it to stick out at least 30 thousandths. So I think I can do this. I'm going to use the file. It's really in there good as my bottom edge and a punch a wide punch as my top edge. I need I need a hand coming out of my forehead here. Eh? So if you don't see, we'll just uh, see how, what kind of result we have because this thing needs to be splayed back out. Try one. Jeez, that almost helped. Oh, that felt good but I didn't get much flattening of that little cam. So we're going to try it again. I have to hit it a little harder and if I get it to splay back out I'm going to heat it up. Magnifying glass, that's what that's for. Uh oh. I think I need to tap it down now. I have flattened it out somewhat. Yep, right here mostly. Yep. Oh, I wonder if it's enough. Well, that sort of worked. I need something a little smoother though. I'll just keep plugging away at this until we get it. Okay. Hi guys. So part of the problem with Tecumseh is that the carburetor and the muffler are on the same side. So the, uh, the exhaust valve has to reach way further so this little mechanism has to uh, has to reach way down to the exhaust valve on the other side over here and I'll just give it a little flick for you here. One, two, that should do it. And it's pretty darn stiff, hey? Eh? And all we want that to do is just go and just let a little bit of air out and uh, give us a release of compression so that this thing will turn over a little bit easier. I'm not quite sure what to do here. I've got I've got that valve moving a tiny bit. That's without it being assembled, right? Hello my friends. Well, I'm finally back on the special edition Sears Tecumseh 195BA. I think that's what the uh, engine type is. Just one moment please. 195BA. This 
head gasket. I ordered it two weeks ago. We did a trace on it through the post office and it ended up 2,700 kilometers east of here in Quebec and they eventually turned it around and got it to me. <laughs> Not the fault of the supplier. Uh, they've been great to me. Lawnmower Hospital. I'm going to put a plug out to them in Edmonton, Alberta. So thank you, Lawnmower Hospital in Edmonton, Alberta. It was not your fault. It was uh, it was the uh, Pony Express that took it away. So I got the head gasket. We're going to start assembling this engine now. So I'll talk to you in a bit when I'm rocking and rolling. All right, I'm looking up the uh, torque head torquing specifications and it says 200 inch pounds. Now in the actual chart it says 160 to 200 inch pounds but I'm going to take it all the way to 200 inch pounds not foot pounds because it's an older machine and uh, there might be slight variations that weren't there 23 years ago. Is that better? So yeah, I'm going to 200 inch-pounds on this uh, on this head. I'm going to clean it up first, and uh, we'll come back. All right, my friends, this is a very flat piece of arborite. 220 grit sandpaper. And we're going to have a look here. And you can see that it, it's, uh, it's been rubbing here, here, and here. So now, not bad, right? You might as well just be careful and do things right. Now this is this was 220. This is 600. You can hear the higher sound. There, that's perfect. There's a clean part of the rag. I'm just going to wipe that off. Got a little tiny bit of fuel on this rag. There we go, there's a clean spot. Good. Now I'm just going to place that back there. One moment, I'm just putting my sandpaper away. You can use this stuff more than once. Now, head bolts. How many do we need? <laughs> well, we're going to need at least that one. 200 inch pounds, right? That was, that's what I said. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight. I'm a little nervous about this, you guys, because this, this head gasket doesn't look that meaty to me. But it is a 37796 for an LV-195BA Tecumseh mower. Did you get that? Alright, so this head, this surface is clean. This surface is clean. We've got our new head gasket. Let's use it. I bet you I end up getting two of these because the uh, Lawnmower Hospital was kind enough to send another one. All right. Look at that. Okay. So, you know what I'm going to do, you guys? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to just turn you off. But first, right after that, I'm going to clean these on the wire brush. And then we'll come back. I'm just being careful. Okay. Get you lined up pretty good there. <laughs> Head gasket, be my friend. Let's just start with two, one at the top and one over here, so the alignment doesn't get messed up. Good. 
Good. Now we'll just stick the rest in. Now in the book they give you the exact uh, cr crisscross pattern of torquing. Uh, and I will look that up. But let's get these snugged up. Not snugged up, but just touching. I'm going to stop you here. I'm going to get the book out to make sure I do this exact mundo, girly Rooney. So, I've got it set at 17 foot-pounds. I'm going to take it back to 10 foot-pounds, or even 12 foot-pounds. We'll start from there. I'm even gonna not even I'm not even gonna do that. I'm just gonna How am I doing Wayne? There we go. I think I can snug them up before we snap get the uh, torque wrench going. Oh it did click. That's fine. Don't forget this is 12 in 12 foot pounds right now, not 200. That one down there is hiding, I think. Okay, so I think I'm going to mount this in the vise because it's just a little bit shaky. So just give me a minute. Okay, I've got the shaft on a piece of rag. And now we're going to torque that bad boy. First to 12 foot pounds. Oh, we'll start at the top. Number one. One, two, three, now we're going to take it up to, uh, what was that, 17, 15, All right, 16, 17 foot pounds, let's do it. It's still moving a little bit on the on the output shaft, but that's all right. So now, oh, oh I got to push down and out a bit, eh? Two. Now I'm going to redo the whole thing in a circular pattern. And we'll be done. I'm trying to do this in front of the camera, right? Right on. Let's get it off there. I don't like that thing being pinched by the vise, eh? Did I damage it? I don't think I did. Nope. Not at all. All right. The next thing I got to do right now is open the brake. You see when the... Uh... Okay, guys, can you see that? All right, so when, the, when you close the bale on the lawnmower, this opens and pulls the shoe away from inside the flywheel. So here's the flywheel, and that brake shoe goes on the inside of this rim here. You see that? So that goes on there. This actually needs to be pulled in so that when you put the flywheel on, it comes back and touches. So let's just get a tie rack for that. There, that'll do. Let's just get a three-quarter inch wrench here. I believe it's a three-quarter. I'm just, I'm just tapping this uh, bushing down, this plastic bushing. 
Good. Now the flywheel has a torquing spec as well, eh? So now we take our good, brand new flywheel key. Hammer. What am I forgetting, guys? Good. Okay, so we got to have to put the coil on after. I'm just trying to think of anything that goes on the top here. We've got the carburetor loosely mounted, right? It's just loose. I'm just going to stop and take a minute. Because this is practically a rebuild, right? I mean, I had this thing apart right down to the, uh, the uh, compression release, OCR. Well, I've got the carburetor mounted. I might as well get it centered, eh? Right now. Use this end. That's lovely. Not very often you actually get that kind of access to those. All right. So I'm ready to put the flywheel on. We've got the flywheel key set. Um, but I think it's lunchtime, and yes, I have to go get my own lunch. Lunch. So I just went into the house to make myself a small lunch, and Mrs. P says. Lunch isn't quite ready yet. I've got the bacon in the oven. I think we're having bacon and tomato sandwiches for lunch. That'd be cool. Thanks. So, it wasn't a bacon and tomato sandwich. It was poached eggs on toast with hash browns and uh, crispy bacon done just perfectly. Hey! Must be getting later in the season. Thanks guys. Okay, so this is where a person forgets about the camera. Flywheel key. Flywheel, remember we offset the brake so that it wouldn't uh, uh, catch the flywheel key so we can turn it a little bit. And the flywheel cup. And with these you turn it so that it actually grabs something. There should be marks. Right there. Right there. That's the best one. And my torque specification is 33 foot pounds. Is that correct? There we go, I believe. run that in and out a couple of times because I did have a pair of pliers on that on that thread. Things you're never supposed to do that you do, right? Okay, I should go on there a little easier now. Oh, yeah. on this one. Let's get up to 33. There's 35. We'll do it at 35. 35 foot-pounds. Right there, baby. I don't know if I've got the muscle to do this. Because I don't... It's, when you do it on the lawnmower, you're holding the blade, right? 
Now, have I got a way to block that without breaking anything? Except my face. <laughs> we just want to hear it click without breaking this nice aluminum. I'm not going to go any harder than that. I'm probably right there though. I know what I'll do. I'll get, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to do this properly. I'm going to get my big long torque wrench. Alright, this might look clumsy, but it's going to work. Look at the size of that torque wrench, eh? And I got it set for 35 pounds. And in the book, flywheel nut, 30 to 33 pounds. So that'll work. I've got, I've got a pipe wrench holding the cup now because it's tight, right? And we just need a click. <clears throat> Holy. Nice to have the tools. I don't bring this big boy out very often, eh? And then when you're done with your with your torque wrench, take it take the pressure off the spring so you don't lose the calibration. Okay, cool. Alright. So now I'm just going to squirt a tiny bit of oil into there. And we're going to see if we get any poof, poof, poof. We don't need much. Okay, so we need a drill. And now we'll make sure we're relatively secure here. And I want to see if I've got compression. That'll do. Yeehaw! Okay, so what's next? Carbs on, tight. We got a good flywheel. We got a good bulb. Uh, everything's set up. Head gaskets torque. Flywheels on. Uh, we need my friend Klaus. He sent me these cool deals. I mention them every time. Klaus from Hobby Motor. There's probably a torque spec for the for these uh, coils too, right? Let's just get this out of here, bring that up through there, hook it to there, and then hook that on there like that with that. Good. And let's get a quarter inch ratchet socket thing and tighten down this coil. Now remember the brake is disconnected so there's no ground on here so now when we take this out we should get a spark. I'm not kidding you here. Let's turn this over and see if we've got a spark. You got her, Cotter. No, I'm not. It's a blue spark. And I wondered if this engine had a problem with the uh, coil. I'm almost tempted to try this coil just to see if there's a difference in the appearance of the spark. Let's do that. We've got the technology, right? Only takes a minute, and I want to make sure you're on and watching. Alright, just fun now, because I like, 
I don't do this for a living. I do it for fun. So this had a little light blue spark. And I want to see what the spark looks like on this guy. Okay, close where's your thing? Loosen them up a little bit. This is your best chance. If you want to play, this is your best chance, right? Now, we have this, and I want to see what the spark plug looks, spark looks like. Again, with this beautiful NGK B2 RM. B NGK. B2LM. I want to see what the spark looks like. Careful, Bruce. Sing. I'm going to leave that one on. Excuse me. Yeah, I just said excuse me to a camera. See if I can turn it over with a drill. Maybe, maybe not. Well, first of all, <laughs> you got her, Connie. You got her, Cotter. I can turn it over by hand. This is this is getting to the point where you could really pinch your. Get that spark out of here. I say we're ready for the rest of the assemble. Let's get physical. All right, Woodruff key. And this all going to line up too, guys. Don't forget. A little bit of red Loctite. Hey, I just bought some more Loctite. Look at this. Same red Loctite, but this color, this one's in a red one, and this one's in a blue one. That's how old this blue one is. But this is about how much a guy uses when he's using it. That's all you need. Oop, too much. Aha! Can't put it back in. What's that old saying? You can't put toothpaste back in the tube? Now, this is going to go right into the groove. There's a hole in the pin here, right? Eh? There it is. It's a centered itself. This is important stuff. Now, are we getting close to putting this on to the that, 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 yes, thanks, extra, Ow! Yes, sir, Bob. We're getting close to putting it on the deck. We're going to get the deck over here and we're going to reinstall this engine on the deck. This is the big deal. This is where, pardon me, this is where we uh, marry the bad boy back together again, eh? Good. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to take it 
I'm going to put it together exactly the same way I took it apart. I'm not going to use the air tool though, because you can snap these uh, these holes are self-tapped by these screws or bolts, and you can snap snap the case on this very easily. So, plug to the front on this particular model. You got the pulley on and tight. We're in. And then we just have to get the uh, engine lined up here. Just hang on. Right there. <laughs> Nothing's easy. That screw right there. Uh, come on. Wants to swivel on me, eh? No. I want to get it all in one shot here. I'm going to just give it a small tweak here. Good. Numero dos. <laughs> well, I'm going to tighten this one up. But it has to rotate a tiny bit. Where you gotta be careful. Let's do the other one. It looks like a little friendlier. Can you guys see me? I think you can. Don't do it. Okay. Half a turn. Now, for security, we're going to use the big ratchet with the half inch goober. One the ball. One more. Good. Now we might as well put the blade on that. Now it's already it's in the air. The blade is sharp. First I'm going to clean up this. Might as well look might as well have it look new, right? I'll be back in a bit. Alright. Now believe it or not, this thing just sits in here like this. Can you believe that? There must be wear marks, eh? Ah, it's held, it's held by that. That's what holds it. Yes. Very cool. Blade adapter. And blade. This side to grass. And that looks like a 9 16 And I'm going to use air on that. Okay. 
So I'm going to change to the big ratchet, see how that feels. 40 foot-pounds is quite a bit, you guys. That's it. You, don't, you want to be able to get it off of there, too. <laughs> so I think everything's done under here. So now it's just a matter of dressing up a Tecumseh engine. Mm -hmm. And I want you guys to see something cool. If it's possible, you have to listen with all your ears. I'm going to turn the engine over to the point where we have the decompression release. Suction. You hear that? You hear that? That short little that just lets the pressure off the off the uh, cylinder, so you can pull it with a rope. All right. So what's next? The cover, I think. It's starting to run out of stuff. Ooh. Yep. Three eighths. Five sixteenths. Okay, let's start with the three eighths at the back. We'll get you guys back so you can observe. There we go. And then we go five sixteenths. Now, I'm going to just take this uh, speed wrench here and just Make sure they're okay. Oh yeah, I got a quarter of a turn on. And then the ratchet on the three eighths. Things are happening. Okay guys, so on this back one, I'm using a three quarter inch one, not a half inch one. And uh, I put Loctite on it. Right there. Good. Dipstick. This is a pleasure to put on. That means we can add a white. Good. And then, we're going to put the gas tank on. Let's just verify you guys are still cooking here. Back you up. And we got to hook up the... Uh,
Now I'm going to use four screws to hold this down, not two. So give me a chance to find those. Too fun. I've got four quarter inch threaded, but they go to a point. You see that? So here we go with the rewind. And they're a quarter inch. I'm going to put four in just in case my uh, uh, OCR starts to become difficult, then they're going to be pulling really hard on this rope. Eh? One. Two of these have never been used before, right? Sheet metal, you gotta be careful. Three. Four. This is the other one that's not used. Good, now we can put the gas tank back on. Maybe. Now we can put the gas. Yeah, see how that Gas tank fit on there now. Here they are. One. You guys just watched me build a lawnmower today. Now, don't get crazy with that. again. It's funny how they switch back and forth, eh? This one can take some grunt. Good. Have we got anything left? An air cleaner. We won't worry about that just yet. I think that's it. An air cleaner and a, here's the old air cleaner and the head gasket. That's all I got left. Okey now let's hook up. Come with me. I'll turn you off and bring you back over here. Okay, here's the last hundred milliliters of oil. And we'll check that. So let's just let things settle down and I'll put I'll put a quarter of a tank of fuel in it or so. See how we do. Okay, let's do a walk around. So this is a 22-year-old lawnmower, 21-year-old lawnmower. It was made in 2002, and something bad happened to it, and it sat. Then it was sold to a pastor of a church just a couple months ago for two hundred dollars, and it. Rev to a thousand or five thousand RPMs, and the guy that sold it to him said, "Oh, that's what mulching blades sound like." And also, the decompression uh, cam, which is really small, it's the size of a pencil lead, had flattened out, so you couldn't pull the rope back with you were fighting the full compression of the six and a half horse engine, so it was wearing out the rope pull. So he brought it to me, and I told him all of this. I told him, no, no, this is a 22-year-old lawnmower. Shouldn't run at 5,000 RPM. Uh, let me take it apart. So we got to the point, I fixed the cam, 
the uh, compression cam myself with a ball peen hammer, believe that. And then I ordered a head gasket and it took two and a half weeks for the head gasket to get here. So that's just because it got lost by the people at our mail. So here we are. I haven't started it yet. I'm going to give it about six pumps on the primer. I got you over there because the sun is shining in the door, right? So we'll get a, uh, we'll get a clamp for the, for the brake. We'll go down and let's see what happens. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go past the point of compression on it, right there, and then give it a pull. for a while. Okay, now I have it running at 3180. And to do that, all you have to do is bend that tab. I don't know if you can see it, but right in there behind the carburetor, there's a vertical tab right there. And you just push that back a little bit. You'll see it's bent to the bent to the left. It has a spring on it right there. So it runs. That's good. It does, it does seem to be changing RPMs. But now that I've got it turned up a little bit, the springs could be weak. It could be a thousand things, right? So let's just back you up and reshoot this. It works good. goes round and round up and down. I just need uh, an air filter. Well here we go guys. Let's back you up. Oh Mrs. P has even come out for the, uh, the big event. For the big event. I've had it running before. I, take it, I just take it past the hard part. Thanks for coming out, Mrs. Pete. It's a miracle. So, my friends, the uh, the RPMs ended up being 3,180. I fiddled with it a little bit more, of course. But okay, so just look at the front tires. This is a front-wheel drive, 21 or 22-year-old machine, and. Uh, 
I don't think it's I don't think it's got 10 hours on it. So something bad happened to the decompression and they just shoved it in a shed and and then somebody sold it to the pastor for 200 bucks. I know, eh? So thank you so much for following me on this one, guys. It took, it took a, about five weeks because I was just waiting for parts and you know how it is. Sometimes that happens. Bye.